Hello, my name is Ben Swan, and today I'm interviewing Ed Bolden. Today is March 10th, 2014, around 5 o'clock p.m. We are located at Ed's house on Indian Hills Drive, Lenore, NC. So, let's get started. My first question to you, Ed, is when and where were you born? I was born in Lenore, North Carolina on May 18th, 1947 at about five minutes after midnight, so I just barely made it into the 18th of May. I am a Taurus by uh, Zodiac Signs and I was born at what was then known as Dula Hospital. What were your parents' names and do you know how they met each other? My father's name was Ralph Bolden. My mother's name was Betty Marr before she married my father. They are both deceased now and have been for uh, three and a half years. My father met my mother when she was walking down the street in Lenore. My mother had been sent to Lenore as an employee of the Western Union Telegraph Company and it was her first job after graduating from high school. Where did you live and has the area changed a lot over the past few years? I lived at the time uh, at an address that no longer uh, exists. The house is still there where Skyland Apartments are now located off Lower Creek Drive used to be my uncle Ernest Kirby's alfalfa field and I grew up in the house that is located just to the southeast of Skyland Apartments. The house as I say is still there it's been renovated but uh, my aunt Lizzie Kirby owned the house uh, was willed to her by her mother and my father and mother rented about three quarters of the house which we lived in. My aunt, great aunt and uncle were uh, childless so they had three rooms in the house and we had the rest of it. How was it like being a child in Caldwell County? When I grew up it was it was fun. I miss not having any brothers or sisters but uh, only at certain times when you wanted someone to play with you had to go out and find somebody your age to play with but then again when it was Christmas time and that sort of thing you got all the presents so that that was the advantage of being an only child <laughs> but you probably miss some negotiating skills by not having brothers and sisters to uh, to deal with we had a lot of fun. We used to go exploring. There were a lot less people in uh, the county at the time. For example, in the local area where I lived, there was no Wilkesboro Boulevard. That was a swamp filled with blackberry briars. None of those businesses located along uh, Wilkesboro Boulevard existed. Uh, today you've got funeral homes, you've got uh, Norman and Lambert, you've got uh, First Place Ford, and all sorts of things down there that didn't exist before. When I was approximately 12 years old, I delivered the Lenore news topic in the afternoons, and I covered an area in Lower Creek, and I also covered Tremont Park which was a pretty good pedal, but there weren't that many houses in Tremont Park then. What were some of your childhood memories? Do you, do you know any? Mostly good. I can remember tagging along with my father occasionally. He was an avid golfer and he would let me go along as long as I stayed out of the way and was very quiet when anyone was trying to putt or when they were trying to tee off. Those were the two crucial times. The rest of the time I could run around and say pretty much anything I wanted to do. Uh, I remember hiking up High Brighton Mountain with boys my age. That was just about an all day trip to go from our houses. Most of the boys that I knew lived uh, in the same area that I did. Some on East Over Circle, which was 
a street then, and some on the Wilkesboro Road is what Lower Creek Drive was called then because that was the road to Wilkesboro, the only road, at least from that area. Uh, let's see, we're on childhood experiences. I can remember riding on my great uncle's tractor with him when he was plowing the fields. I didn't ride with him when he was cutting hay because that was dangerous. And I remember watching the people when they baled the hay and when they got it up. He had anywhere from six to ten white-faced cattle, all steers as far as I remember. We didn't have to do any milking that he raised and uh, fed them on corn mostly that he grew. Uh, occasionally he did have to buy some other feed for them, but uh, they grazed in the pastures and uh, ate the corn in the winter. Uh, they were kept in a barn in the winter. The total acreage of my Aunt uh, Lizzie and Uncle Ernest's farm was about 20 acres. What schools did you go to in Cobble County? I went to Lower Creek Elementary School. In the sixth grade, I went to Davenport Junior High School. They weren't called middle schools, and they were called junior high schools. And the ninth through the twelfth grade, I went to Lenore High School, which has now been converted into apartments, uh, mostly for elderly people but it was located on the corner of Willow Street and College Avenue and the other street that went by was known at the time as West Harper. Did you have any, did you have a favorite teacher that influenced you? I had two favorite teachers. In the fifth or sixth grade, I'm not certain, I had a Mr. Petit and I cannot remember his first name but uh, I thought he was the first teacher I'd ever come across who could actually interest me in various and sundry subjects because of the way he presented the material to the class. And then a couple of teachers in high school influenced me a great deal. The first was also the high school principal at the time at Lenore High School and his name was Henry McFadden and he got me interested in history as a subject and I've enjoyed it ever since. And Virginia Cobb was the uh, dramatics teacher and she got me interested in plays, playwrights, trying to perform. I was never very good at it but I've been interested in plays and that led to an interest in people like Shakespeare. Um, do you remember anything happening in Lenore during the Civil Rights Movement? I do not. Uh, I'm sure some things happened, but I cannot remember anything untoward happening. I think everyone was well behaved under the circumstances. I know they had quite a bit of controversy and perhaps trouble in Greensboro where the uh, African American students refused to move from the lunch counter because they thought they had the right to be served and the proprietors thought they didn't and of course we, we all know how that question was settled. A person is a person, their color doesn't matter. Back to your family, um, how, are holidays or how are holidays traditionally celebrated in your family? Pretty much the traditional way. Turkey on Thanksgiving, if we're lucky we don't have to have turkey again at Christmas. We get, we get out with ham or something but it was a small gathering, just family and very close friends. Not a lot of hoopla over it. We tried to remember the original meaning of Thanksgiving, which was to be thankful for those things which we did have, rather than remorseful for those things which we did not have. And Christmas was to be remembered as a religious occasion rather than a commercial occasion to go out and spend money and buy presents. If you got presents, that was all well and good, but the reason for having Christmas was to celebrate the birthday of Jesus Christ. So we tried to keep the original meaning of the holidays for the holidays. We never really had a celebration as such for 
a lot of other holidays. Easter was a religious event. The 4th of July, you shoot firecrackers, but it's not a, a big deal. You know, the, uh, the uh, country celebrated its birthday on the day that the Declaration of Independence was presented to the, uh, to the Continental Congress. We're not quite sure about that, but they picked the 4th of July as the date to celebrate it. We did not, as I can remember, have much of a celebration for either Memorial Day or at that time it was called Armistice Day, which is on the 11th of November, which was significant at the time, specifically the end of World War One the 11th month, the 11th hour, and the 11th day of that month. We never did celebrate, as far as I know, the end of World War II, which was the other cataclysmic war in the 20th century. We never did celebrate uh, the end of the Korean War, which was simply an armistice signing. And uh, I'm trying to think of any other holidays we may have had none that I can think of uh, right offhand. What holidays do you, um, are the most important to you? The most important holidays are to me Memorial Day when we try to remember those people who have given their lives in the service of their country and that is pretty much restricted to military personnel and uh, Veterans Day when we celebrate all those people who have been in any branch of the military service. Uh, of course, the biggest Christian holiday should be Easter rather than Christmas because the big event that mobilized people who later became Christians or were Christians at the time was not the birth of Jesus Christ. That had very little effect on anyone at the time other than his mother and father. The big event was the crucifixion and the rising from the dead, and this is what Easter should commemorate. The 4th of July has got to be important, whether that was actually the day that we declared our independence from Britain or not doesn't really matter. The fact that we declared our independence from Britain and were able to maintain our independence and become a separate country rather than a colony was instrumental in what the United States is now. Um, does your family hold um, any reunions? Like Not on a regular basis. Uh, my grandmother on my father's side was a Carlton they try to have a reunion once a year in Boomer, North Carolina, which is where they have an old restored cabin that uh, I believe his first name was John Carlton built in the uh, 1800s. And uh, I don't believe uh, the, the Boldens have too much of a reunion that is anywhere near here. Most of their reunions are in Virginia, and I've been to a couple, but uh, not a big deal made of it. My mother was a Mar, as far as I know, there's never been a Mar reunion, uh, at least not that she went to or we went to. There was a Wright reunion. Her mother was a Wright before she married a Mar. And uh, I've never been to one of those reunions, but they did have them occasionally. Family reunions, although they love to have little kids there running around squealing and screaming and having a good time, family reunions seem to be one of those things that are reserved for old geezers. They tend to enjoy them more. Um, do you have any keepsakes from your family, like your parents? or? I have keepsake-wise my father's first pilot wings that he was awarded when he became uh, a pilot. 
in the Army Air Corps during World War II. I don't have my mother's diamond engagement ring, but my daughter does. Uh, it was given to her by her grandmother before she passed away. And I do have a charcoal drawing uh, of my great-grandfather on my father's side and my great-grandmother on my father's side. Uh, the, uh, the drawing of my great-grandfather is particularly important to me because he was a Confederate veteran of our, I say Civil War, but it wasn't really a Civil War. If you go by the strict definition of what a Civil War is, it was the war between the states. A Civil War is where you have two or more groups fighting for control of the same country. That wasn't the situation when we had our war between the states. We had one group of states who wanted to withdraw from the Union and another group of states who did not want them to withdraw. And the federal government and those states that did not want the southern states to withdraw invaded the southern states known as the Confederate States of America which Mr. Lincoln, as president, said uh, did not really exist, but because there were combinations too great for local law enforcement to handle, he called it a rebellion. When and why did you leave Caldwell County? I left Caldwell County initially to go to college. Do you know when? I left in uh, September of 1965. Um, I hear that you that you joined the Air Force. Um, how old were you when you joined the Air Force, and how many years did you stay? I think I was 22 when I joined the Air Force. I joined on September 29th, 1969, and I was discharged from the Air Force on October 24th, 1976, having served precisely seven years and 25 days. Not that I was counting. Um, what is your most memorable experience during the Air Force? Probably uh, my most memorable experience was the year I spent in Thailand in general uh, controlling aircraft that were in and out of a combat situation and being instrumental in providing a service to those pilots and hopefully in saving some American lives. What kind of things did you do in the Air Force? I was an air traffic controller. I worked both in the control tower and in the radar units. Did you go to um, any foreign countries besides um, Thailand, I think? Foreign countries I have been in. I have been on Okinawa, which is now part of Japan. I have been briefly in Vietnam. I have been in Thailand. I have been in Singapore. I have been in Malaysia. I have been in England. I have been in Saudi Arabia. I have been in Sweden. I have been to Bahrain. And that just about wraps it up, I think, for foreign countries. Oh, Mexico also. When and where did you meet your wife? I met my wife at a dance in a student nurse's dormitory in Barry St. Edmunds, Suffolk, England on October 25th, 1974. And um, when and where did you get married? I got married, we got married, in the base chapel at RAF Lakenheath, England, on October the 26th, 1974. What did you do after you left the Air Force? After I left the Air Force, I applied for work with the Federal Aviation Administration. I passed the test, but I would not have been hired from my place on the hiring list 
until after my 31st birthday, which at that time would have meant that I was too old to go to work for them as an air traffic controller. So I went to work for Lockheed Aviation International based in uh, Ontario, California, and my first duty assignment was to book Saudi Arabia, which is located up near the Jordanian border. The Lockheed International had a contract with the Royal Saudi Air Force to provide air traffic control services. Um, and when did you move back to Caldwell County? I moved back to Caldwell County in August of eight, 1984. And I heard you were in the Postal Service. What were some of your jobs in the like? I was you? always a rural mail carrier or a rural letter carrier is the official title when I worked for the Postal Service. And I worked for them for just over 16 years. Was that in Lenore? It was in Lenore, yes. Do you remember any funny or weird um, moments while being in postal, while being a postal man? Well, I remember one time uh, one of my patrons invited me over to look at his new uh, puppy that he'd just gotten. And after I got over and looked at the puppy, he said, oh yes, be careful where you step. And after that, I was careful where I stepped. And I didn't discover till I got back into my car that I knee. had stepped where the dog had uh, had a bowel movement. And uh, unfortunately, there was no place to wipe my feet. I had on boots with grooves in them. It was cold, very cold that day. But uh, I did ride with uh, all the windows down, and it was a little chilly. But I couldn't get rid of the smell. Um, and you worked for the um, Postal Service for 16 years? Yes, just okay. over 16 years. Okay. Did you do anything after the Postal Service? No, I did not. I have not held a job since I retired on a disability retirement from the Postal Service. I am now receiving and have received since uh, January of 2002 uh, disability payments from the Social Security Administration. And um, back to your family, did you have any kids? I have two children, a boy and a girl. Okay, uh, what were their names and how old are they now? The boy's name is James Edwin Bolden. He's 34. He is a doctor of musical arts and a professor teaching at the University of Louisiana at Monroe. Our daughter is Joanna Elizabeth Porter. She married John Porter. Uh, they have one child and she's due uh, again this month, March 2014, with her second child. And she is a full-time mom.